Welcome back, everyone, to Nanaliza Don. Our main host, Dominic. We have another exhibition replay request match. Dive Florian versus Failthos on Wanderlust. Bit of a longer one, so let's get going and also speed up the game slightly. Because I don't want to be here all day. <laughs> okay, actually, I kind of don't mind, but... Yeah, let's see what happens. So Dive Florian going for Clickbot Factory and Failthos going for Jumpbot Factory. Kind of surprised we're seeing a Clickbot Factory on this map. Wanderlust has for a little while been kind of a jump bot center. It's, I mean, the last few matches I've seen have just been jump bot mirrors on this map. So I'm a bit surprised to see non jump bots, but also kind of happy to see non jump bots. Field House going for just a bit of scouting puppy into Pyro. Fairly typical start, while at the same time the Glaze coming in here from Dying Friend are going to be going in and dealing a bit of raiding, a bit of scouting. Won't be too bad, just, you know, getting a little bit in there. Seeing what Field House is up to. Maybe they don't know. Maybe they want to know. I mean, obviously they don't know because they haven't... Dying Throne hasn't gone in and set up a radar right next to Field House's base. But, you know. It might be... It might work. But at this point, Dying Throne is... Very quickly looking for Reavers, in fact. Which is an interesting choice. I do agree, considering that Glaives have a bit of a hard time against Pyros. And especially against Puppies. But at the same time, Reavers potentially lock out a little bit of what Dimefront might be able to do as far as actually stopping their opponents from... Eh, that's way too fast. Actually stopping their opponents from being able to get through their lines. I mean, okay, sure, Reavers stop the puppies, stop the pyros. But it also means that Dimefront is kind of seeding ground. Like, they can't really raid. They can't really get in and check what their opponent's up to. So yeah, Field Toss is going to have a bit more room to play around in the map. Granted, that's until the Reaper actually gets there and starts wrecking face, but until that point, yeah, Field House can get loads of money. Actually, maybe we'll... I don't know. It's just I know it's going to be a longer game. Hence why I'm speeding it up. But at this point... At this point, Field Toss kind of doesn't really have a whole lot they're going for as far as territory is concerned. They've, they've gone forward... And from here, they could take this entire southeast section of the map and not really worry about it. But they aren't doing so. Dying Front, on the other hand, expanding in a bit more of a typical pattern. On top of the Reaver coming in here, trying to deal a bit of extra damage. But I'm not really sure what the intention is. I feel toss at this point, setting up pretty typical expansion. Like I said, they haven't built up everything in the, along the way. Dying Front, on the other hand, not really expanding beyond more power. Which, at this point, they're fine for power. They, they could build a couple more metal extractors, but I do agree that they are building the solar plants, getting that infrastructure up. We saw last game how that really made it difficult for, for 400 to actually do anything without power. It's always important, but the Reaver goes in and the Reaver dies because there wasn't enough support and Reavers don't do especially well against Pyros. They do okay, but not especially, not well enough. I mean, this is the point where I'd kind of expect to see more Ronin. But Ronin Reaver is exactly what we're seeing coming out of Dying Front right now. Same time, Dying Front's commander already upgraded for... Machine Gun, as is Fieldos, as both of them recon Machine Gun Commander. Dying Friend forced to retreat, but Fieldos ch giving chase. I don't know if Dying Friend's going to be able to get to that Lotus in time, and I don't think it will matter. Dying Friend's Commander going down very early in the game. Fieldos keeping their commander alive, losing a Metal Extractor and a couple Lotuses, but no big deal. However, at the same time, Fieldos going to be losing yet more Metal Extractors as the Lotus goes down to a couple Glaives. Ronan as well for extra support on top of that, so this entire expansion here could be in trouble. As revenge, though, Fieldos going to the north side of the map, or at least attempted revenge, finding there's not really much room they can just send Pyros into attack. And with that, more Glaive... Nice. That is really nice. The glaive Ronin combo to help soften up the Lotus before the Glaive comes in. Also distract the Lotus slightly. But these Glaives are going against a Machine Gun Commander. What are you expecting? That is essentially a Reaver with a massive amount of HP. I don't understand the logic there, but then again, that Commander is almost dead. So maybe it's worth it just to push it, see what happens. At this point, Dying Friend not doing especially well efficiently as far as attrition goes, doing a bit better as far as economy, and certainly taking more of their territory and actually taking advantage of it. But it is just tricky. I'm not sure exactly how they're planning on taking this match. <laughs> oh, okay, fine. I guess I'm cutting corners as usual. Fine, I'll slow it down slightly. Sorry, Wesley. But... Still, back to the game, though. Dimefriend, oh, Dimefriend, all these naked expansions over to the north side of the map. I don't see this being, obviously, 
all that useful at staying alive? I mean, these are naked expansions. They're going to be burned. And Dying Fern's going to actually be at an economic disadvantage coming to Filth House for basically the first time this game. Oh, the Lotus is in range. Stopping the Pyro. Oh, is that Pyro going to... Yes, that Pyro is going to be fine. Gets rid of the Conjurer as well. As always, that is the important thing. Get rid of the workers. But the Pyro being careful. Retreating as a result of that attack. Figuring, you know, that's enough. That's good. That's a Ronin. That's a dead Pyro. I mean, it did some work, but Dying Friend should be able to rebuild without issue. There's a Conjurer already near enough by that it won't be a big deal to rebuild. Yeah, this one was lost, but it also it also had support. It had friends. So it's not going to take that long to rebuild. At the same time, though, Dying Friend still taking the southwest side of the map. Still in the process of doing that. While Fieldthos taking their southeast side. That's what I was waiting for. Get these metal extractors. They already have the forward part of the territory. Just fill in the back, get all that money, and that's exactly what Fieldhouse is doing. Now 10 metal per second ahead. On top of the attrition advantage, Fieldhouse is really getting in this match hard. Like, they are doing a great job. They have moderators up as well, so the center of the map essentially belongs to Fieldhouse. Dimefrine trying to attack back with some Ronin, but really, this is where Glaives shine. But then, of course, there's the placeholders. That stops the Glaives, and the Pyros, which stop the Glaives. So right now, Dimefriend is going to have a bit of a hard time, and I'm not really sure, other than Phantom, what they could use to get rid of the moderators, and... Oh, that's exactly what they're doing. Get into Phantom. Well, good for them. That's exactly what they want. So, that Phantom... That'll help maintain center control. Or help gain center control for Dimefriend. I mean, Dimefriend still has the western and northern side of the map, so it's not like Dimefriend's in the worst of positions. But... Fieldthos is in a position where they could really start assaulting whenever they'd like. In fact, if they assault sooner rather than later, they don't have to worry as much about the Phantom, because then they can rush in puppies to get rid of the Phantom. Although, with the Jack up front, the Phantom will likely get distracted by the Jack instead. If it's properly microed, it will go for the monitors, but it is on fire at will, so proper micro will be basically impossible for Dying Friend to accomplish. At least not without, you know, changing the fire state. But I don't see that happening. The thing is, that first phantom shot is going to give away the fact that there is a phantom. Now, I'm sure Fieldhouse is expecting there will be a phantom as a counter to the moderator, because that is a pretty typical counter. But once that's given away, I'm curious if Fieldhouse is going to switch over to puppies. Oh. Okay, that... Ah, blew up the pyro, that's why. Bit of a missing thing. How did that... Why did... How did a moderator getting hit by that? No, because it wasn't a moderator getting hit. It's a pyro, and pyros leave fire when they die. Because, of course they do. They're... They're full of fire. That's where their fire comes from. They just have it. It's part of them. A fire flowing through their veins. Or their circuits. Seriously though, why are the moderators not being the target? Or the placeholder? Actually, more so the placeholder. Because the moderators, yeah, that's bad. You can get rid of them. But the placeholder, if you get rid of that, then you can rush in with glaives and not worry about it. Because the main problem for the moderators is anything that's really light. Like raiders. Anything light deals a lot of damage. Has a lot of shots. Because the light stuff, I mean, one mod it's one shot by the moderator, but that's it. But the placeholder stops the light stuff from coming in. There indeed are the puppies, as expected, to help get rid of that placeholder. Hmm, nice gremlin. I like that. Putting the gremlin in the way to try to block off the placeholder from the puppies. But really, Phil Thoughts could just rush in there, take out that placeholder. Or sorry, take out the not placeholder, take out the phantom. And there's essentially no threat. Good protection coming in from the Reavers, though. Dying Friend making sure the Phantom does not get hit, but honestly, I just don't understand why the Phantom has not been used to get rid of these moderators yet. There we- no, not even! Just target the moderators. Set target, moderator. I don't see set target on moderator. Okay, I see it now, actually. There it is. Ah, there we go, got rid of the moderator! I mean, there's one in the back, but still. Okay, moderators are finally gone, the puppies are there. That phantom took a little while to become useful, but it finally is as the firewalkers come in here to make its life miserable. The phantom cannot easily walk around because, of course, anything getting damaged gets uncloaked and fire damages things in an area. So the firewalker should be able to spot that phantom pretty quickly. Actually, as it stands, Dying Friend also giving a bit of a hard time as far as power is concerned. Again, another thing required for cloaking of this level. Not much, mind you. Apparently only one energy per second, but still. If Dying Friends runs out of energy, they run out of cloaking. If they run out of cloaking, then their phantom becomes not that useful. At the same time, Raven's coming in the backside of the base trying to get rid of some of the production. Yeah, nice shots on the caretakers. Losing a bunch of Ravens in the process, however. 
still does reduce how much production Dying Front has, forcing them to rebuild all these caretakers and making them excess metal for a little while. On top of the fact that they're clearly quite focused on the front lines instead. And with the puppies coming in here, those phantoms have no defenses. One down, the other one's still alive, but that does leave more room for moderators to be built, as well as this firewalker just to walk around. Because again, phantoms do deal enough damage to one-shot the firewalkers. 1500 damage to 1250 HP. So if that phantom ever got close enough to the firewalker, the firewalker is done. But of course, the firewalker can just keep lining out fire, and then the puppies go in and kill off the phantom, so the phantom can't really deal with the firewalker. Unless the phantom were to walk forward right now and guess, but that's not happening on top of the fact that Dying Throne's force being pushed back while burning, while not having the production to rebuild their army, while being slightly behind economically. I mean, Field Thoughts is setting up for a pretty convincing win. And maybe I am overvaluing the Firewalker. People in chat pointing out that maybe overvaluing the Firewalker, and yes, possibly, the Phantom could kill it. Like, it, as long as the Phantom walks up to it, it could kill it, but Dying Friend is not going for that walk-up. They aren't moving in there to kill it. They were, I'd say different, but they aren't. So, yeah. Also, Dying Friend realized they're actually watching this right now. Why is your Firewalker, why was your Firewalker not on fire at will at the first? Like, that's a default unit state. I don't know. Actually, not as so much for Dying Friend. I'm kind of surprised that... Firewalker, sorry, Phantom doesn't have Hold Fire as his default unit state. I think I'm going to set mine to that, but I don't think it's the default. Anyway, north side of the map, Jack trying to take out, well, trying to distract. Setting up a bit of a distraction so that the puppies can try to rush in with the Firewalkers. I mean, really, Field Thoughts' strategy right now is clearly to try to push Dynefern in as many directions as possible at once. However, Dynefern having put out the fire over to the northeast side of the map, now dealing with literal fire over to the south side of the map, Revealing where one of the phantoms is, but not long enough for the puppies to actually deal with it. Again, if that phantom can just get close enough... That is the tough thing, though. Getting that phantom close enough to get rid of the Firewalker. Still, Dimefrain managing to rebuild themselves, getting Tank Factory on top of enough metal per sec or enough build power to actually use all the metal they have. And on top of a much stronger energy infrastructure, so despite having been at a bit of a disadvantage earlier and me saying it was a convincing win, looks like Dime Friends actually managed to rebuild just fine. I'm clearly a little bit too excited to actually see what happens in the game. <sighs> well, I guess that's good. It's always good for the caster to be excited. At this point, though, Dime Friend actually having rebuilt pretty effectively should be able to walk in. I mean, the moderator is doing a bit of a number on the Warriors, yes, or the Reavers, rather. But, still, it doesn't matter when that phantom can come in, and I don't know if that phantom can come in. Stinger is down. The phantom should be at least getting a target, but that's the Juggernaut, and the Juggernaut is not going to be the target of choice. Because I don't know why the phantom's not going to afford to deal with the Firewalker. This Firewalker's gotten so much value. But, well, Juggernaut, so that'll be the thing taking all the damage. I mean, at least the phantom can deal with it from a distance. Doesn't have to worry about the gravity gun so much. Now on top of that, size coming Wait, what are these sides being used for? Are, you're not planning on jug, hitting the Juggernaut with the sides, are you? Dying front, I, I'm hoping these are being used for a backyard assault, because that Juggernaut will destroy the sides just for them being nearby. Like the Phantom, that, that's the answer to the Juggernaut. That's what you need. That'll get rid of it. Or get rid of the support moderators, or if the Emissary doesn't, I should say, because that, that was a nice Emissary shot. Oof, another nice Emissary shot. Didn't manage to get a kill, but still managing to deal a fair bit of damage. That should get rid of the pyros. One pyro down, damaging... Ooh, the puppy's down too. Ah, not quite. The pyro, pyro doesn't kill all the puppies. Still, though, dying for managing to hold their own reasonably well, and the Juggernaut, too much damage from all sides, will go down inside of dying for base too, so that's a lot of reclaim. Most of which is going to be taken by Field Thoss's puppies. Or no, the Reaver's making sure that does not happen. These Conjurers being nearby, too. Dying Friend, just get a little bit more build power. Like, set up something from the tanks, get something from the Cloakies, and then start reclaiming. That is a lot of reclaim right there. And okay, good. The sides are being used for a backyard attack. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted to see. Get rid of that metal structure. Get rid of the defenses. Get rid of the geothermal plant. I mean, lose the sides in the process because the geothermal plant's explosion is going to kill them, but still, one scythe is left. So that is still useful. Unfortunately, that scythe is not going to be able to deal any damage thanks to being slowed down. But, hey, still got rid of a decent chunk of Field Thoss' power infrastructure. 
At the same time, though, Jax coming into the northern side of the map, getting rid of the metal extractors being built up there, and really wiping out a lot of Dime Friends' control over the territory, on top of the fact that this Leco is just causing all sorts of havoc without really being stopped. Still, though, this Phantom... Ooh, the Phantom's so close to the Firewalker! I don't think the fire. No, the Firewalker is known! It's seen! I... The Phantom's right there! It's so close! Firewalker makes one bad move, or the Phantom just decides to go forward a little bit, and the Firewalker's done. But feel with us, on the other hand, they are doing really well for air superiority. They're doing really well for ground superiority. It's hard to push. Dynfer has been doing an improve, increasingly good job defending their base. Like, it's just a matter of these jacks, though. They're coming in. They're not really being destroyed. Not quickly enough. I mean, this is 12,000 HP. That has to be gotten rid of. Which, I'll grant the Glaives do enough damage per second, then it's not too bad, but still, it's... It takes like 10-15 seconds to get rid of them after being softened up by Phantom, and while losing the Glaives in the process. Still, one Jack goes down without really getting anything for that death. I mean, losing five Glaives for a Jack? Yeah, totally worth it. That's a tenth... That's half the cost of a Jack. Like, each Glaive is a tenth the cost of a Jack, so... Ah, value for dying from it. Getting back in that attrition. Not to mention their economy isn't that far behind either. I would like to see them rebuild this, but they don't have any builders nearby. So yeah, get a contra up there. Or a welder for that matter. But still, Diamond doing pretty well on that reclaim. Doing really well on the production. Make sure they actually are using the metal they have. So I'd like to see that. And getting that Cyclops going. The brief, brief slow torpedo Cyclops, which is no longer the way Cyclops works as of the latest version. It's back to the old version. But, I get to see a little bit of slow torpedo cyclops. Ooh, get rid of the placeholder, too. That actually opens things up massively. I don't think any glaives are coming in. The Reaver's getting a bit of a hard time. No, never mind. There's, no, there's two more placeholders. Did not see that. The Gremlin's also set up trying to wait for that Leco to come in. And indeed it is. Going for the Metal Extractor. There's... And there's Gremlin. There's some Razors. But there's not really much to get... There's not really much to get rid of that Leco. That Leco just got way too much HP to work with. And on top of that, all these jacks, like 30,000, well, 15,000 now HP worth of jack. Again, that is the tricky thing. There's not a whole lot of high DPS units coming out from Dynfreund. Mainly the Phantom, which is doing a decent enough job on its own. But that's about it. And the Phantom's actually going to go down right now thanks to the Le Oh, no, the Leco not going to the Phantom. The Leco going instead for the Razor. Oh, no, never mind. Going behind the Razor for the Metal Extractor. That is super risky. The Leco almost dying to a Gremlin. Nice little bit of maneuvering to get away from where that Gremlin was, but still, that is cutting it dangerously close. And, of course, every time that happens, it takes longer for the Leco to rebuild because... Or, to... Not rebuild. It's not dead. It takes longer for it to attack because it has to repair after reloading. Actually, no. It repairs after reloading. So, it could actually do okay. I mean, it'll, it would be killed if it went for another assault right now, so it still has to wait for some repairs. But that is getting kind of risky. However, with two Lecos in play, that's not really relevant. The only downside, however, is that that's not really giving Dynfriend all that much room to work with. Dynfriend actually getting a lot of reclaim, getting a lot of economy. Not building up more tanks, though, surprisingly. They, they could build up more emissaries. They could build up ogres. Actually, I think it would be a really good idea right by now just to help get rid of the jacks. That get the damage to actually deal with the jacks. Cyclopses are clearly not the way to go in terms of actual damage, because the jacks and placeholders can just wipe them out. But, you know, build up a few ogres. That would help get rid of them, especially when they're clumped up. That being said, the defenses are doing enough of a number, it's not really that big of a deal. But at the same time, just how many... Field Toss is just spamming jacks. That's all they've got. Just jacks all day, every day. It's like 60,000 HP worth of jacks on the field. And why not? Because there's not a whole lot that's actually contesting the jacks, or at least killing them quickly enough for it to be a problem. Like, sooner or later, you get a critical mass of jacks. And Dying Throne, they have some Reapers, they have some Glaives, both of those do a pretty good job against the jacks. But again, providing that they don't get killed by the Leco or the Firewalker. And if they do, well, that's a huge problem. And of course, Glaives are not particularly tough units, so the Firewalker will get rid of them. Or the Puppies, for that matter. Again, I don't know why the Phantom has not been used to fight the Firewalker directly. One shot, the Firewalker's dead. Okay, time for in chat pointing out. 
the lower the HP of the bomber at the end of the run, the more efficiently it was used. And okay, fair enough, I guess, in that it dealt damage further in the back. I mean, it's assuming it lives. Which this one might? Oh, man. How, what? Okay, Field Doss is doing a really good job getting those bombers out of dodge. But really, Dying Thrones, they had like, one more gremlin there. That would have been it. And I guess that might be what Dying Thrones is thinking about efficiency. Like, went with an area that had a reasonable amount of AA investment, got in, dealt damage, got out, and did not die. So, I can kind of see where Dying Thrones is coming from as far as repair, or as far as HP being inversely proportional to efficiency. At the same time, though, Dying Friend just built, like, one more bit of anti-air there. That would be really nice. Like, one or two more gremlins, that would probably do the trick. But, of course, that means not having as much anti-ground forces to deal with the jacks, which, again, are another massive problem, which really is keeping Dying Friend from rebuilding. I mean, they can't really rebuild the Metal Extractors without the Leco killing them. They can try, but it's not easy. There's a lot of reclaim to be had, and Dying Friend is taking that, which is very helpful. But still, it's only so useful. And the Geo plant going down as well, so Dying Friend, they're... Overdrive's a little bit worse than it used to be. Their energy economy's fine. They've got plenty of energy to work with, but still, the overdrive's not great. And the Jacks, again, dealing boatloads of damage before finally being taken out. And getting rid of the Conjurers on top of that. That is always the key thing. Get rid of the Builders. There's still one left, but to rebuild everything that was here in a reasonably efficient amount of time, one Conjurer will not be enough. So that was still an extremely useful assault. And the Lego doing a fine job getting rid of the welders, so really dying for they're trying to reclaim, but they're losing the welders. They're trying to keep stuff alive, but the jacks get in there and deal way too much damage at once to actually be gotten rid of before, well, half the base is gone. And Philthos, they're clearly just amassing jacks. Like their armies is gradually going larger because they aren't losing a lot of units in the process of killing things. They're playing so efficiently that sooner or later they will just have a critical mass of jacks, or a critical mass of force in general. And we'll be able to waltz right into Dying Friend's base and wipe out everything. So at this point, Dying Friend, I'm not really sure what they can do. They're going for the assault, trying to get rid of a few jacks preemptively. Not a terrible idea, but then again, that's where the Firewalker comes in, and the Phantom is nowhere to be found. Where the heck is the Phantom? Not sure. I do like the fact that Dying Friend is assaulting from multiple sides, though. Kind of like what Field Toss was doing earlier in the game. But Field Toss, they are already pretty well prepared for that. The Jacks, just on their own, are making that impossible to be consistent. Like, this, what can Dying Throne do when they can't deal with the Jacks quickly? So I don't really see any options here other than, again, if they can get rid of the Firewalker, if that Phantom can actually tag the Firewalker, it would work. It would be enough. But it's not going for it. So I don't know why Dying Throne is saying in chat, oh yeah, it's really important to get rid of the... To, you know, that the Firewalker isn't really good at countering his Phantom because it's doing fine. Like, the Phantom has not threatened the Firewalker in the slightest. Ah, there we go. Now it's going for it. There we go. There's the Firewalker gone. Finally, the Phantom takes out the Firewalker. Ten minutes too late, but there it goes. And another Firewalker is up, but the Phantom is perfectly in range to get rid of it. If it weren't for the fact that it was stuck in the hill. Man, I was singing the praises of the Pathfinding earlier today, but yeah, it's a little questionable. Ooh. Good job with the Reaver getting rid of the Jack. The thing is, though, the, this Phantom needs to be very careful to avoid the fire, but the Jacks know exactly where to go. That Phantom is done. Did its job, though. Got rid of two Firewalkers without too much issue. Still value, and there's still plenty of build power to build another Phantom with. On top of the Jack... Sorry, on top of the Dante, on top of planes coming in. Not sure what the goal of the planes would be other than building Swifts. Nothing's been announced yet. Dimefront is not pre-building anything. My guess would be Swifts or Raptors, just to help clear out the air, clear out the Lecos. Probably going from there into Ravens of their own to help get rid of all these Jacks, because if anything's going to efficiently get rid of Jacks, it would be about a dozen Ravens. And if anything get rid of the Lecos, the Lecos avoid the anti-air, it would be Swifts. Oh! Lecos down! Dimefront finally getting some value out of their anti-air! But still, that's like of two Lecos of about 12 bombing runs that have been successful. And even then, that was a successful bombing run. He had the bomber die, but that's the one bomber that's died out of, like I said, a dozen runs. And that's still huge value. So Field Thoughts right now, the one thing is they aren't doing especially well efficiency-wise. Uh, they're getting a bunch of puppies up to try to help get rid of the Dante, help get rid of some of the small units as well. 
Well, the Dante of the Jacks are starting to go down. They're starting to lose on attrition as well, and Dying Friend's economy, while still slightly behind, is not that far behind. Not to mention the center of the map is basically open right now. I mean, the Jacks and Placeholder are still causing a bit of a problem, but those Jacks have to go somewhere, and that means that the center of the map is basically unclaimed. Not to mention with the Air Factory being built up, that means the Owl is up, that means the, the information's there. I'm a bit surprised Dimefront isn't going for Raptors or, or Swiss to try to get rid of the Lecos. Especially as the Lecos are going to be going for the Dante, I'm sure. I mean, why wouldn't they? Oh no, they're not going for the Dante. Instead, they're going for the back lines again. Looks like they're trying to try to get rid of the factories, if possible. And I can't say I blame them, because that would be extremely efficient. Yep, there is... Get rid of the up No. Get rid of the power plant? Yes! Get rid of the advanced geo plant, wiping out the Strider Hub and the Air Factory all at once, killing all of them in the process, but still Dimefront losing almost all of their power infrastructure and most of their metal infrastructure, a lot of it apparently was overdrive from that one advanced geo plant. Now at this point, Fieldthus has already wiped out enough of... Sorry, Dimefront's already wiped out enough of Fieldthus' army that Fieldthus should not be able to walk into Dimefront's base with that assault. But that is still huge. Fieldhouse still massively ahead economically. Dimefront needs to rebuild inside of like a minute. Maybe. That may be enough. And even then I'm not sure if they have enough units set up to rebuild. And the Dante might be able to get a bit of revenge shots in there. If it, get, if it, gets, if it gets through the placeholder, it would be able to deal some damage. But that's a really big if. Not to mention there are still several Lecos in play. And Fieldhouse can quite quickly build more. Time for, however, on that reclaim to at least get themselves back in, back in the game somewhat. I mean, it's a bit slow going. They have to rebuild the geo plant on top of re-upgrade the geo plant, on top of rebuild all the energy pylons. Because, like I said, a lot of that was overdrive that was keeping them in the game. But still, a bit of a hail mary pass from Fieldos. I mean, they they have the advantage, but as it was, like I said, Dying Friend was in a position where they could push. And they could push and have a lot of reinforcements, and it'd be hard for Fieldhouse. So that was well timed to so at least keep Dimefriend from getting a huge amount of damage in this game. As well as, you know, get rid of the Strider Hub and get rid of the Air Factor, which would have gotten rid of the Lecos, I'm sure. Like, that would have been Swifts, that would have been Hawks or Raptors, maybe. I mean, if Dimefriend actually decided to build them. <laughs> Moho is the best anti air in this game. Yeah, no kidding. Time for putting on the chat. The advanced geo plant did the best job, and indeed it did. Actually, Fieldhouse is already going for the Raptor just in case, while at the same time also getting Striders of their own, getting Scorpions of their own. Which, I mean, that's a thing you could do. Sure, why not? But Dime Friend, again with the geo plant, getting it upgraded, which is going to be most of their economy. In fact, I think this might be a really bad idea right now. Dimefront's army is not in the best of positions to actually hold the line. Uh, they can, more or less, but if these jacks push, that's that likely will be it. It's mostly gremlins, a few reavers and ronin, and of course the Dante, but the Lico can help get rid of all of that. I mean, the Lico is actually focused on getting rid of the Dante. The Dante is done. So I'm really not sure what the motivation here is, other than maybe trying to get through back into the old economy. It's not a bad gamble. If Dimefront manages to pull it off, they've got boatloads of overdrive to work with. They'll get their economy back up and running. But even then, it really is a matter of speed and time, and Dimefront, they did manage to rebuild quickly. I'll give them that. But it's still a question of whether or not they're going to be able to deal with the Scorpion, be able to deal with the Jacks, be able to deal with the fact that there's loads of Lecos, and that Fieldhouse hasn't really pushed their full force in. Nor have they started reclaiming a lot. Like, they're going... This is 70 metal per second static economy plus overdrive. It's not including reclaim. Yeah, and the Scorpion gets in. Juggalot's in behind along with a bunch of moderators and placeholders. This Dante is done. Advanced Geothermal Plant finally back up. Dying Frame able to get a bit of overdrive going. But still, it's... I don't think it's going to be enough. Does put their economy closer to Fieldhouse's. But that's at the same time as the entire center of the map being wiped out. Dimefriend can just watch right... I mean, Feldhouse rather can just walk right in. The Scorpion is a spider. It can just walk through the cliffs. It's probably going to stay with the support forces, but once it gets rid of Dimefriend's entire front line, I don't know if there's much motivation to do that. Because, again, he's a jump boss. The Jacks can jump over the cliff, and then the Scorpion can just walk over the cliff, and everything's good. 
So with that, I think Fieldhouse might have this. Dying Fern able to at least reclaim their way back into a reasonable position economically, but they don't have the production capacity. They don't have the Strider Hub. They don't have airplanes at all. Getting some Cyclops to try to maybe get rid of the Scorpion that way. And the Juggernaut. But Fieldhouse, I don't think they're that concerned. Got another Firewalker along with, again, the massive amount of Jack they had earlier. And if the fact that Dimefriend's defenses are really strong, I don't see any reason why Fieldhouse hasn't won by now. But Dimefriend's defenses are that strong. So, yeah. That's a thing. Oh, FFC being kind of rude. Funny on chat that Dimefriend just needs to build a Paladin! Which, for those of you not familiar, also knows a detriment, which Dimefriend actually did try to build in the tournament last week. And, yeah, that was... That didn't go so well. Like, you know, Detriment isn't entirely that cheap. At the time, Dimefront had like 100 something metal per second, which they do now too, but I don't think they can go for it. I think they can just try to use all this metal to rapidly build up air, maybe get another Strider. Probably another Dante, probably not get a Detriment. Oh, Paladin's Bantha, my bad, sorry. Right, right, right. The Detriment was just. Was Detriment just Detriment? I can't remember anymore. My bad, sorry. Paladin's Bantha, which isn't as expensive as Detriment. Still would be very difficult to work with, but at the same time... Oh, Desolator coming in? Yep, okay. Well, I mean, I guess Dimefront has all this metal that they just reclaimed into. Might as well turn that into forward defenses. I mean, the Leco's going to put a stop to that, but... Of course, going to try. Put a stop to some of the build power being invested into it, but... Not necessarily enough, and there is power getting into it. It's... Or very close. So close. Not close enough. The pylon, not quite in range. Same time, Scorpion over to the south side of the map. Having no trouble getting through everything that's been built up here. Dimefriend losing a little bit of extra power. But the Desolator is done. All it needs is something to connect it. It's just another pylon, maybe? Is that what's going in this hole? Yes, it is! Get the pylon in the hole. And on top of that, you have air units coming in. Well, no, not yet. You have airplane factory that's built. Both the Desolator done. What can Dimefriend see? Everything! Dimefriend can see everything. They have owls. What am I thinking? The Desolator could do its job and wipe out stuff. At the same time, Cerberus being built up. I mean, why not? It's 36 minutes into a 1v1. Why not have a shielded Cerberus? Actually, why have we not had a shielded Cerberus earlier? We just have a Desolator now. Finally. Actually doing a pretty decent job, too. Making the Juggernaut regret having ever been born. But there's the Cerberus up. And not finding a whole lot of value. Should be able to get rid of some of this. Yeah. Expansion over to the side here is vulnerable, but the Cerberus doesn't have much range. Like, it can actually get to the Desolator, but it can't do much. It gets rid of the front line somewhat, but the Desolator, on the other hand, this thing's range is... Min really? Is that it? That's really it. It's just it's just this. Huh. I thought I had a much longer range. No, apparently medium range. Not sure. Okay, seriously, what is the range in this thing? Plasma Cannon. Range! 650 yellow. Yeah, wow. It's slightly longer range than a Ronin. Okay. I guess it'll hold the center, but the Cerberus can get rid of it, so... Good luck with that. And a Missile Silo, because why not? What is Fieldhouse doing? Going for a Paladin? Oh, there it is! Okay. Yep, there is indeed a Paladin being built by Fieldhouse. Not by Dying Friend, as had been expected. Just by Fieldhouse, which... Yeah, that should be a... That maybe? I don't know if it's going to be it. I can't call it anymore. It might be it. Who knows? I don't know if it'll be it. It's actually kind of hard to tell. This stage in the game, got Missile Silos coming in. The Missile Silos doing their job. Probably getting a... Okay, getting a couple of Eoses. Probably going to use to get rid of that Cerberus. I mean, why not? It is causing a lot of problems. But again, there's... A need for a Shock Leaf first. The Aegis in there. Nope, just Eoses. Four Eoses. That... I don't think will be enough to get rid of that. Well, 3,500 damage. Actually, yeah, two Eoses would get rid of it. Or three, I mean. Three Eoses at once on the Cerberus will get rid of it. First one will hit the shield, and the other two will go through the shield and get rid of the Cerberus. There we go. So the Cerberus does go down, but the Bantha... Now about a minute away from being built. On the other hand... North side of the map, we do have Jack still coming in, but honestly, I'm not sure how much Jacks matter anymore. I mean, at this stage in the game, we finally have a lot more Striders. We have, a, well, not even that. Even that, we got more of the more basic units being built up, and that's that's working out okay. Of course, the Scorpion's still alive. 
Still only the one Scorpion. But that's around. The Bantha is about to be built. And there is another Missile Silo coming in for Fielthos. While Diamond Furnace Missile Silo is now being just left in its own. Building up the Chainsaw to try to help deal with the Leekos and the Owls. But honestly, I'm not sure how much it's going to matter. The Scorpion coming in the south will still cause some problems. But if that Chainsaw is there, that does mean it's harder to get rid of the Moho plant, Mo Geo plant. The Advanced Geo plant. Should discourage the Leekos. And, okay. Nope, more Eos is being built up. This Missile Silo is not going to waste. Then Fieldthos also setting up the Eos Missile Silo. Not really sure what the plan is here, because right now, I think... Oops, I, no. I can't see what the attack range is. Oh, right, because this is one of the attack range. Which I... Ah! Yep, no, I can definitely get the Advanced Geo Plant. I was thinking, the Advanced Geo Thermal Plant will be a really good target for Dynefront. Like, get rid of the Advanced Geo Plants that Fieldthos has, get rid of their energy economy, and that's not what they're going for. Going for their opponent's Missile Silo instead, and not hitting! Missile Silo remains standing. Of course, more Eos is being built up, but Dimefrain not putting them on repeatables or anything that would actually make them build faster, but nope, that's enough! Okay, I guess the Eos', Eos is blow up in the Missile Silo to help finish it off, because that was 3,500 damage. That wasn't... No, it wasn't enough to kill. It had taken damage earlier. And there's the Geo Plant gone, going off in a small nuclear explosion of its own, and getting rid of basically everything on the south side of the map. There are, however, still two more... Yeah, two more advanced Geo Plants that Dimefrain could get rid of, but nothing stops them from getting rid of them. And at this point, Fieldhouse has nothing stopping Dimefrain from getting... Well, okay, they have the Scorpion. That, that stops Dimefrain from doing a lot of stuff. But then the Scorpion might actually be the next target. Or the Bantha. Though with 30,000 HP, that Eos has become pretty weak. Still, that's another advanced Geo Plant down. I mean, Dimefrain really going for the revenge after what happened with the Lycos earlier. I just don't know if it's going to actually be of much use. What with the Scorpion just coming in here and wrecking all the face? And the Bantha at the front lines stunning out everything. I mean, the Desolator doing what it can. It's not paralyzed yet, so it could actually help, but... The question of, is it in range? And no, it's not. The Paladin being very careful to not be in range. And this Missile Silo not building with the last missiles. Ah, oh, the Scorpion's not going to go down either. The Scorpion instead getting rid of all of Diamond base. Like, if this Paladin goes down, there's still a bit of a chance. But Fieldhoss, I think they've dealt enough damage. They have two Scorpions coming in here. The Paladin may go down. And indeed it does go down. But the Scorpion inside of Dimefrain's base has no resistance whatsoever. So Dimefrain would have to rebuild from scratch. And indeed, they already have a factory set up to do that. Going for Thug Law Ball. Thug Law Rogue Ball to try to close out the game. I mean, it might work too, considering they have gotten rid of the Scorpion pretty well. Mostly thanks to the Desolator. But hey, how much reclaim is in here? It's gotta be like 4,000 metal. Oops. 4,000 metal and reclaim. 7,000 metal and reclaim. Mostly in Field Dust's territory, but man, there's some room. Oh, that if that advanced geo plant goes though, one more EOS be enough. But no, the advanced geo plant going to the scorpion, sacrificing itself to climb over the hill, getting rid of Dime Throne's only real power source. I think this is gonna be it. Field Dust moving in with the jacks. EOS's can't really be built anymore just because of well, there's no power left. There's no real metal source left. That is it. So I think that is going to be just about game. I mean, Dying Frame might try to rebuild, but at this point, I'm not sure how much good it's going to do. I almost kind of wish we had seen that Missile Silo hit the last metal, or hit the last wind generator, or geo generator, rather. Hit that last geo generator from Fialthos. Dying Frame managed to hit that. That would have been, that would have been effective, but I don't think that'll happen. And in fact, I'm kind of surprised Dying Frame is still holding on. They got a lot of reclaim to work with, but not a lot of power. That's kind of the problem. They need a lot more energy if they want to actually be able to do anything. And that's not helping the Jacks. I should say the Jacks are not helping getting that power. Actually, really being a really big problem right now. As the Jacks wipe out all the solar plants and leave Dimefront with basically no power infrastructure. Desperately trying to build a fusion reactor, but there's not enough metal to do it with. Even with all that build power, it's... Yeah, it's desperate. It's the only way I can really call it. If that fusion plant comes up, it'll help. But even then, there's so much damage that was dealt by that Scorpion going in the back lines. I don't really see what could be done to save it. I mean, the fusion plant coming up would at least mean a chunk of overdrive. Like, this would go up to about 22-ish total metal per second. Energy wouldn't be a concern. Reclaim would be useful again. 
And there's a lot of reclaim to work with, so there is that. Wouldn't be a bad plan, actually. I get this up, get the reclaim going, and then that should work. Yeah. Okay. Get. Wait, storage? Oh, storage is destroying the back lines. Yes, of course, this would have been. And then with that, the reclaim should be of some use. Yeah, get the reclaim. Get the. Oh, okay, there we go. The last EOs. Are we going to see the last. Are we going to see the last geothermal plant go down? I don't know if it's going to matter, but we might. Or maybe see then the missile alley go down as well. I don't. What, what does Dying Frame know right now? They don't actually know what's there. But they know enough. They know that there's a missile silo around there. Ooh. Oh, this is so close. I think they're gonna be mutually assured destruction. I think No, that no, never mind. No, Diamond's gonna gonna lose it. The EOS here is gonna be done way faster. And that's it. Dime Frame throws in the towel. Field Us takes after a long, intense game. Where really Field Us, they had a massive advantage. Dime Frame held on through means I'm not entirely sure we're supposed to work that way, but they did. Okay, the Desolator was supposed to work that way. That was actually pretty clever. But the rest of it... Man, those Jacks just could not kill anything enough, but they also couldn't die. Huh. Well, anyway, that is going to be the second game for tonight. There's another one, also by request, between Dying Throne and Dr. Doom and Sonia. That's going to be up next. There's a bunch of requests of getting in the chat as well. I'm... What are these? Oh, I see. This just... Oh, pointing out that the game is being started right now. Oh, I see. There's another... Another game on request. I don't know if we'll be able to get to that today. Because these are some long games we're doing. We'll see, though. I might actually be able to. But, yeah. The next game is going to be... Dying Throne versus Doctor Doom on Adansonia. So that'll be up in a couple minutes. We're not doing a 24-hour stream, actually. Like, most Saturdays, I usually have to get going about an hour or two after I start... Or a couple hours after I start streaming. So, that's actually why I started streaming earlier today. I started streaming at 10.30 just so I'd be able to deal with that. Anyway, so we'll be back with Diamond Friend and Doctor Doom on Adansonia. Although, I guess that's... Well, it's Adam Sonia. That's one thing. It's prob. I don't know if it's going to be as exciting because Adam Sonia tends to be long because the map makes it hard to actually attack with. But we'll see what happens. Anyway, stay tuned. <laughs>